Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris M, and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. And today, uh, we're going with kind of a a free form right now. Um, I will basically uh, be be giving to you whatever the Kundalini in me wants to give to you. But in the meantime, I want you to know that we are open for questions, and the number that you call to ask a question is area code 347 Nine three four zero zero two six. Once again, that's three four seven nine three four zero zero two six, and uh, and we'll we'll get right onto your question. So feel free to ask it. Uh, any of you that are listening right now, uh, feel free to give that number a call. I would like to uh, to introduce uh, Centara into the program. Hello, Centara. We have these uh, these no, studios. No, I'm here, Chrism. Uh-huh. I know. I'm just exp- Hello. Just, just hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, whenever I click over to Centara, it's going to take a while because we've got these digital uh, studios, and so it just takes a while for the clicks to come on. So here's Centara. Hi, hello, Chris, and hello, everybody. It's good to be here again on this Wednesday. Um, It's 11 p.m. here and 3 p.m. in Santa Rosa, and I just think, well, this is wonderful the way we can communicate around the world now with everybody listening in various parts of the world. So I would just like to begin by perhaps talking specifically to the people in Europe about the Kundalini Awakening Seminar that's going to be happening very, very soon in Dublin and Ireland. Um, the Awakening, the Kundalini Awakening Seminar will be led by CRISM, and it's happening in, it's not actually happening in Dublin, it's happening in County Meath, and it is just 30 minutes from Dublin Airport. So I would like to invite everybody to consider coming who, you know, if you're listening to this program and if that resonates with you and you would like to meet with Chrism or with other Kundalini people, it's a it's a fantastic thing that you can actually do for your process. Um, if you would like to get in contact with me to ask any question at all about the seminar, um, I'll give you the email address, but I'll give you the, the dates first. It begins on Friday, the 18th of October at 7 o'clock, and it finishes on Sunday, the 20th of October, around 4 p.m. So we will be with each other as a group Friday night, all day Saturday, um, right through, and then on Sunday we will finish at 4 p.m. So the the, um, email address that you can write to is Kundalini Matters at gmail.com and that's all one word with no spaces kundalini matters at gmail.com and i also have a phone number which is 086 029 actually if you're phoning from europe you need to put 00353 08 sorry let me say that again because you dropped the zero it's 0038 Five three eight six zero two nine seven six seven six, and I'd be delighted to hear from you. And when you arrive in Dublin Airport, your transport will also be arranged from there to the venue and returned again on Sunday. And the venue is in a beautiful place in County Meath. It's in the Boyne Valley, which is where that very very ancient um, monument site is called Newgrange which is, you know, very, very old, older than the pyramid. So it is a perfect place to be having a Kundalini awakening seminar. And on the very first night that we meet, which is the 18th of October, we also have a lunar eclipse, especially arranged for our gathering. So again, do get in contact with me if you have any inquiries. And again, Kundalini Matters at gmail.com. So that's for the seminar, Chrism. Okay, very good, very good. Thank you for those announcements, Amelia. Um, good, good, good. 
Uh, later on in the program, uh, I'll, I'll also want to give you the floor about your other uh, uh, points of interest. So today, as I mentioned earlier, is a free forum session. Uh, the number to call in is 347 9340026, and and then uh, you'll you'll probably get Centara right off the bat because she's pretty fast with that on her switchboard. And uh, we'll look to your question as soon as we can. It looks like we have uh, Fashji is typing a message, uh, and it looks like somehow I'm typing a message without using any fingers. <laughs> well, okay. And it looks like, uh, yeah, okay. All right, Brandon, hello, hello. Good to see you. All right. One of the things that I that causes people the most of an issue with the kundalini is, is what happens to the emotional body when the kundalini begins to activate. And this, you know, this... As much as with the physical body, the emotional body is extremely powerful and it will form the basis of whether or not you're enjoying your life or not enjoying your life. It will form that basis. We are so intricately connected to the five bodies of human expression that they all have a, a tendency to bleed over into each other, the different feelings in this case, with the emotional body. Uh Kundalini requires surrender. It requires that the human beings surrender their ego and their sense of will uh, in order to allow or to stop blocking or not to form a blockage against what the Kundalini is wanting to, to do with the person in regards to their transformation. How you feel emotionally is very, very important. Sometimes the kundalini will give you phenomena that will cause you to go into uh, difficult areas of emotional response. So you can expect that. Seriously, expect that. Uh, so many things are happening to a person within the kundalini that that normal life has holds no reference for. That you're going to be in a in an emotional kind of a roller coaster ride anyway. But the underlying theme for you can be, if you choose, the underlying theme for you can be that you you know you're in a kundalini awakening, therefore the feelings that you're having and the and the feelings that you're experiencing, the emotions that you're experiencing are quite real and they're good. They're part of the program and you can just accept that and move on. You can accept that and move on without being tied down to degrees of worry or, 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 or you know, OCD, uh, you know, obsessions, you know, based upon, oh, my gosh, you know, why, why is this happening and I'm feeling such and such a way? I don't want you to obsess on it. And I know, and I'm going to get into this a little later, that, you know, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, goes hand in hand. For some people within the Kundalini awakening uh, scenario, so know that, and and realize that. For those of you that feel this information is 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 good for them, is working for them, is is something that they can they can hold on to within the uh, the amazing velocity of a Kundalini awakening experience. Um, for those of you who, who really want to to feel the information that I'm giving to you right now well then I then I want you to to really focus in hard pay attention you don't get to hear this information too often and thank god you know this this show is archived so that people can listen to it over and over and over uh the kundalini doesn't come through a clear channel very often and uh it just happens to be coming through in this case. Okay. Uh, one of the other areas of of uh, 
receiving this information that I forgot to mention at the beginning, and I'll mention it now, are, are, is the YouTube site. Now, I, I, I pick the YouTube site because it gives you an opportunity to kind of see who I am. You see my facial expressions. You, you, you feel the energy coming off, the, the kundalini coming off of me in the videos. And I want you to really partake of those videos. There's about 260 some odd videos on YouTube. Um, I've been placing them there for a while. And uh, they are short versions of these elongated two-hour uh, uh, blog talk radio um, uh, information sessions. Uh, the... The name Chrisum dot Kundalini is is what will bring you straight to the uh, to the channel on YouTube, and then just just peruse through the videos and see which ones you want to pay attention to first. See which ones your Kundalini guides you to first. Let that be a real um, option that you're partaking of. If you have any kind of a concern about my sincerity or about uh, the validity of what it is I'm saying, if you have, you know, even the smallest level of, per, you know, uh, perceptions that allow you to to tell a, a, a liar from a person who's telling the truth or, a uh, you know, the truth from the lie, I want you to watch those videos and and see what what works for you see you know if, if if you feel like i'm lying then then you know none of this information is going to be help for you unless you know that's just your ego saying and your kundalini is going well even though you think it's a lie let's still con continue continue to listen or to watch these things so i want you to go to the youtube video site um it covers it's a whole range of subject matter, uh, everything from the practices that a person would do after uh, doing the safeties practice. The, the you know I have I have it split up. I have it in uh, uh, showing the uh, the five Tibetans and and the various uh, practices that one does, and then what you do right after the five Tibetans and and you know the various. Uh, meditations that you have there. Yes, Amelia, I hear you coming on. Hi, Chris, and just to let you know that there seems to be a problem with sound. People are not hearing your voice um, in the chat room, and John is in the room next door to me, and your voice is not coming out either on air. That said, people listening on the telephone are hearing you, so the list of people there can hear you, but that is all. I'm going to assume that it's going on to the um the archive though. Right. Okay. But just just to let you know, I, I, I don't know how to make it well, okay. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna have to try to make it okay. Um let's see here. I don't know if this is helpful at all. Irene, I know you're listening. Uh can you uh can you come on, Irene, and tell me if you can hear this? Eileen is actually listening on the phone, but she's also on okay, the Okay, all hand. right, all right. So could she type it in that she can hear no. you? No, no, thank you. Let's go to Drakina or Fashji. Uh, no, if either Chris, of you... You need to speak to Julie or somebody. John is next door and he can't hear you, but everybody on the phone can hear you. Oh, that is just so weird. Okay, um... Okay, well, I'm going to call back with the cell phone. Let's see if that works. Okay. In the meantime, uh, Amelia, I want you to uh, relate to people your experiences in emotional control with the Kundalini. Okay, I will do that. Okay. Make sure they can hear you, too. I can't hear you now. <laughs> Go ahead, Amelia. Okay, okay. Well, I, I actually haven't been listening to the conversation at all, listeners, because this was going on as a chat room, 
And so I was typing and I was also speaking. When people come on on air and I speak with them, I don't hear what Chrism is saying. So he's asked me to speak about the emotional um, aspect. And therefore, let me think. Um, there are one of the things that I discovered early on in my process, not so much early on, but once I, I came in contact with um, CAS, Kundalini Awakening Systems and PRISM, is that there was such a thing as emotional kriyas. I had been going through a period of, you know, crying, not understanding why I was crying because there was nothing wrong, um, feeling intense sadness, um, really amplified but not understanding why because there was actually nothing wrong in my life. Um, and yet I knew that it was connected and related to past, to past things that had happened. And so I would often find myself just crying and crying and crying. And for a very long time at the beginning of my process, I used to really, it used to really bother me. I used to feel, you know, I was depressed or that there was, that I was cracking up actually um, because I didn't seem to be able to manage it at all. When I came to understand about um, emotional queers and that the Kundalini was amplifying um, my emotions, and I'm just looking at that one aspect for now, the crying out, the sad crying thing, that I began to realize that it was okay. And I stopped fighting it in the sense of trying to figure out what was going on. And so I began, it, became, it was tied into my surrender as well, but I also needed the information that such a thing happened for me to understand what was happening. So I began to realize that emotional creators were perfectly okay and recognize them when they came and surrender. And that, that I will always remember the difference that that began to make to my process because I didn't have to do anything but allow this to happen. And what was actually happening with the tears and with the... I'm using the word sadness now, but that's not quite it. Was there was huge relief happening in my body, and when I stopped trying to figure out, you know, or even, you know, I suppose for me, because of, you know, I did a lot of um, counselling. I used to be a counsellor, and so there was a lot of process involved in that, and talking about my feelings and talking about, you know, looking at where this. Um, X was coming from and all of that and, and identifying what was happening. And so that's what I used to do. But when I left that go, when I stopped trying to figure it all out, when I allowed the Kundalini to work through my body, to just allow the tears, um, I was actually stunned and amazed at what was released. Sometimes I would I would be given to know what it was. I would just have, I call them whooshes. It was like, it's like a flash of understanding about what just happened. Um, and other times I wouldn't know what the, in inverted commas, the issue was, but I would feel this intense relief. And for me, that understanding that the Kundalini worked in this way on my body um, through emotional kriyas um, and to surrender to them. Actually, I suppose if I say changed everything, but it had a huge it had a huge impact on my process. And Kundalini awakening systems and Chrism's teachings. This is one of the things that um, I suppose for me. It's one of the reasons that I, you know, the blog talk radio, the all the things that Chrism does, I think are so important because we don't, you need to hear this information sometimes. Sometimes we know certain things and other times we don't. And it's listening to information like that um, and 
Christmas teachings on things such as the emotional queers um, that make all the difference to a person or so it has been with me. Um, other emotional things that would have occurred with me, you know, depression, yeah, I mean, which is different, I, a sense of being very separate from everybody, um, a sense of isolation and um, of being apart. And I think what's very interesting about that is that as as my process has um, evolved and, and gone on, um, that has actually changed. I don't, you know, there was a time, yeah, there was and, time and... Oh, I'm hearing oh, terrible I'm hearing sounds, terrible in, my sounds in my ear. Okay, okay. Okay, I think okay. it's okay I think again. It's okay again. Oh, it's not. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. One sorry. second. One second. Hello. Okay, it's okay. A it's a I'm not. Oh. I'm not. Oh. Is that you, Chris? That you, Chris? Can I be heard? Okay. Now okay. Somebody, now has somebody has just. Guys, I think it's Julie, and she says I can hear some tarot talking. So I'm going to ask here, can they can they hear Chrism? Will you speak for a few minutes, Chrism? Sure, sure. You, you can hear me all right. Right, so okay. kind of kind of carrying on with where uh Centaura was going with this is depression. Depression is a very common experience with Kundalini and it can come from different vectors. Uh the depression uh, can come from so much phenomena coming at you all at the same time. Um, uh, you may not be comfortable with spiders or snakes or any of the animal symbols that the Kundalini will bring into your waking and dreaming life, and, and that can cause a person to to go into levels of fear, which can feed into levels of of uh, depression, because. You know, unless you're taking a drug, and unless you're, you know, you're, you're, you're in some way you're trying to treat this medically or, psych, you know, psychiatrically or, you know, some other way, uh, you're not going to do anything with this. And even with the drugs, you know, you, you, often it just makes things worse. So that helplessness can help a person jump into areas of depression. Uh, the many phenomena that you see that may contradict your uh, understandings of of your personal belief system. And if the Kundalini information contradicts with, say, something that's written down in a, a holy book or a sacred book or a sacred piece of information that you maybe have given your life to up to this point, uh, now, oh, my gosh, you know, the Kundalini is saying something quite different. Let me give you an example of that. Uh, the example of the, you know, using the Christian religion, and I'm not picking on Christians. They just happen to have a really, really uh, uh, excellent example for this. Uh, the serpent. Well, the serpent was considered to be the bad guy uh, in in the in the in, in the in the dance between the polarities. You know the. Ex- Extreme love and joy and extreme badness and evil and all of this stuff, right? So uh, the snake or the serpent was was uh, said to be the, the bad guy. And somehow, somehow, the bad guy got into the Garden of Eden. We, don't, we won't go into security issues or, you know, whether or not, uh, you know, the Garden of Eden was being, you know, Patrol, but anyway, somehow the bad guy got in as a snake, and he got up into the tree of life, and uh, and then uh, the sacred feminine took the apple and took a bite out of the apple, so that we would have knowledge of who we are and and what our potentials are. Uh, this is not an evil thing. Biting that apple is an act of nutrition. Biting that apple was an act of grace that is. Uh, you know, humanity from its own uh, from 
from its own, shall we say, uh, egregore-based ego. Okay. Uh, Eve did, all, did, did us all a great favor. And it's only uh, subsequent uh, translations that occurred within the last 1,500 years that that would uh, that would not be happy with what it is I'm saying right now. And, and frankly, I don't really care. The Kundalini is happy with what I'm saying, and that is what matters to me at this point right now. Um, whether or not the current uh, Christian... Uh, understandings of the, the the Garden of Eden and the and the serpent and the the male and the female, you know whether or not that storyline is being upheld doesn't really matter to the Kundalini. What matters to the Kundalini is truth, the truth of who we are and how we are, and what we need to do to continue moving along the same lines of enlightenment, education, love, and and devotion. In an activated sense, uh, the, the kundalini will support those those properties and expressions within a person. Not necessarily the, the fear aspects. Uh, if you show a lot of fear aspects or you're, you're really climbing into depression quite deeply, uh, the kundalini will give you a phenomena to, to help steer you clear of it. Uh, but, you know, depending on you and your, and your response to fear, your response to the strange and unusual in your life, that will determine how open you are to to um, to receiving the grace that Kundalini brings. Uh, let me check in with Santara here. Uh, hey, Santara, am I coming through or am I just talking to, to the air here? No, everybody in the chat room can hear you now and John in the next room to me can hear you as well. Wow, that's so weird. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, John, and in the next room, and everybody in the chat room, thank you. And, 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 and I hope that this is coming out into the archives. And so I'd like to say thank you for the folks who are listening in the archives as well. If you do have a question and you didn't get to hear me say the numbers, well, here they are. Uh, if you have a question about your Kundalini Awakening experience, please call uh, United States Area Code 347 nine three four zero zero two six three four seven nine three four zero zero two six uh so continuing uh the kundalini may try to pull you out of your fixation on the depression but the emotional body can be so strong that it will clamp on to anything that gives it a reason to voice the ego. Now, it's the ego of the person that wants to, to be in control. It's the ego of the person that wants to, uh, that if it, you know, if it's not done the way the ego likes it, then, it, you know, the ego is going to put you into a state of depression. And that's something else for a person to look at is, is how important is it to be depressed? Now, some some doctors and lawyers and priests and and other uh, attributes to our society, you know, they'll say, "Oh, yeah, you got to be angry sometimes. You got to be depressed sometimes." Well, I'm I'm going to say to you right now that you do not need. There is no need or requirement for you to be depressed about your kundalini. The need or requirement is for you to surrender to the kundalini. You surrender to the Kundalini because it knows you so well. It knows you beyond the five bodies of human expression, the five bodies being the, the physical, the emotional, the mental, the psychological, and the spiritual bodies. Some people like to, to line those up with the, uh, with the Purushas out of the uh, Sanskrit literature. Uh, but because I'm speaking with a predominantly Western audience, I don't need to go into the Purushas. Purushas, just quickly, are an energetic anatomy uh, that's written about in Sanskrit. I say the same things when I say, you know, the five bodies of human expression. Well, those, those would be uh, kind of equal with the Purushas in the Sanskrit uh, terminology. And in a way, they're the the, if you look at a at a, a corn, a, a, a piece of corn, and not the little 
not the little, you know, kernel, but the, the stalk of corn. And, and you'll notice that, that all those leaves are closed in around the corn to protect the seeds from, from being harmed. And the perushas and the bodies are the leaves that form around the, the, the human system. And so uh, that's just a, just a little side tangent thing about perushas and the five bodies. They do get, they do get compared. With regard to uh, uh, depression, uh, one of the vectors of depression is through bliss. And you might be surprised, wow, geez, Kristen, how can you get depression from being so blissful? And, and what I'm going to suggest to you is that the bliss can be so strong that its absence will immediately form a vector of, of uh, destabilizing the emotional body or bringing them into depression. The highs can be so high and so amazing and so beautiful and so perfect and so loving and so joyful that when that is all taken away, a person is, you know, one one footstep away from falling into a deep depression through the absence of that divine perfection. Okay, so this is this is something that I really, you know, want you to be aware of, especially those of you that are having bliss and ex- ecstasy uh, experiences right now. Uh, the bliss and the ecstasy can be so strong that the body will respond to the to the beautiful, loving, exciting uh, levels of bliss and ecstasy that the, the person can experience. And then, of course, when that all goes away, then it's an easy jump into depression. Well, you know, you don't have to make that jump if you know what's going on. And you, right here in the studio, and, and you right there in the chat room, and you right there in the archives and on the telephones, you know what's going on, so you don't need to fall into a depression. Some of, the, some of you who are early in your, in your Kundalini awakening, <coughs> these are the areas for you to really uh, uh, mark on your calendar. Um, you know, am I, am I experiencing ecstasy? Am I experiencing bliss? Am I experiencing bodily sensations of a positive nature that I have never experienced before and that are so big and so good that I can't ignore them. They, you know, I get the, 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 uh, the pinpricks all over my body and it's loving and it's joyful and the energy, you know, sweeping up and down the spine or, you know, going to a certain area of the body. I mean, there are many different ways that bliss and ecstasy will express themselves on the human being. Just because you're having it, though, does not give you a reason to go into uh, depression. So, uh, yes, the bliss will come. Yes, the ecstasy will come. Yes, 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 it's good. And yet the body, the human physical and, and psychological mental bodies can only take a certain amount of, of uh, bliss or ecstasy uh, before damage can 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 come. The bliss and the ecstasy are are bare root experiences of the divine. What I mean is, you're not just looking at the divine. You're not just hearing the divine. You're not just seeing the divine. You're not smelling or tasting the divine. You're experiencing it directly upon your system. And this is what's giving you ecstasy. This is what is giving you bliss. This is what is taking you beyond what your physical system can produce on its own. Kundalini is emerging with the divine. And so the divine begins to have a way to play music upon your five bodies of expression. You become the instrument of the divine. You become the music of the divine. And that music is felt and heard and experienced by others uh, through your actions. Are you a helpful person? Do you help people because the kundalini compels you to help these people? 
Are you a are you a person that that uh, is, is is able to be trusted in an emergency? Uh, do you do you give into the Kundalini to the point that no matter what occurs around you, you know that you have the Kundalini. You know that you're walking hand in hand, step in step with the divine agenda. And so anything that happens around you is part of your divine agenda. If you know these things, then there will be no need for you to go into depression. If you know these things and you're around other people who you may know are suffering from kundalini uh, 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 phenomena-based depression, well, you can correct them. You can let them know. And if their ego, if their ego will listen, sometimes we can become so addicted to depression that we don't want to leave it even though we know it's a hurtful scenario. Uh, with the kundalini, you know, if you really, really, really hang on to your depression, you can turn that right into kundalini syndrome, which we've done another show on uh, back in the archives there. You can find it, uh, uh, kundalini syndrome. And the kundalini syndrome will basically, it, it's like a long version through hell. <laughs> you have the choice. You can take the, the short version, you know, and you can kind of go, oh, yeah. Maybe I don't want to go there. Okay, fine. Or you can take the long version, which is like, okay, step by step, level by level, lesson by lesson, education by education. Okay, I don't need to be here anymore. I'm, I'm gone from hell. That's basically what happened to me. Sometimes you you have to 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 experience hell before you can experience heaven. And if you are experiencing hell, well, then there's another vector of depression for you. Uh, so once again, emotional control. Do not buy in to depression or emotions that are based on phenomena that your kundalini brings you. All your phenomena should actually be seen as a gift, all of it, even the stuff that's challenging for you. So let's just say, you know, so here's... Here's a phenomenon I've heard from students. Okay, I'm sleeping. This is typically is in New York City or any of the big cities. London, New York City, Los Angeles, San Francisco, uh, the big metropolitan areas uh, will have these type, types of entities. So you're sleeping on the bed and you roll over to your other side and you open your eyes and there's this big, tall, black figure standing next to your bed over you with a big pointy hat. whole thing is about 11 or 12 feet tall, pretty tall, uh, or at least it feels that way. They, they try to make themselves feel really tall or see to appear really tall. And uh, you have a choice. You have a choice. Well, the first response is typically from most people will be that of fear. Oh, my God, what is this tall thing with a pointy hat doing in my room? I don't recall sending out invitations for for uh, people with, with you know, <laughs> pointy hats. So this is Kundalini phenomena. That basically what, what's happening is when you have a vision like this, your third eye is open to such a degree that for a certain amount of time, the Kundalini will allow you to see uh, in the spirit life and the physical life at the same time. And so you'll see this entity standing there. And it'll look like a physical thing. It'll look like a physical being. And all you have to do is smile and roll over and go back to sleep. I mean, unless you feed it fear, it has no reason to be there. And it might do some things to try to scare you, you know, red eyes or, you know, some sort of a booming voice. Not like my voice right now, not that it's booming, but, you know, it's not, you know, some sort of a caricature of a voice that you hear, like you'd hear in a, you know, you know, in a, a, a Mickey Mouse cartoon. You just uh, imagine the tall black uh, uh, figure in their underwear, and uh, you can kind of like maybe imagine some some funky underwear for the uh, for those guys, the the, the pointy hat guys. Uh, yeah, and just, just do not take the bait of being tricked into going into fear. You always have the choice about fear. You can go into it or not. 
Uh, yes, they, they try to appear big and tall and scary, and so that puts your physical body into worrying, okay, which sets off all the other worry alarms in the rest of the body. And so once you understand that this is, oh, this is a kundalini phenomena, I don't need to be afraid of this. Once you're able to adopt that understanding and that ideology, uh, life will go much smoother for you. Your kundalini will go much smoother for you. And this all traces back to our emotions and how, how much we are able to have a sustained uh, ability to control our emotions. I'm just checking right now. Uh, uh, um, Sitara, can you ask your husband if he's still hearing me? Sitara. No, there she is. Okay. Yes, Chris, and he's still hearing you. Am I coming through clearly? Yes. Okay. So every verbal mistake can be heard, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, thank you. And thank you to John. Thank you, John. I hope you're winning. That's all I can say to you, John. I hope you're winning. Um, so let's let's continue along the line of our of our emotional uh response to Kundalini. Uh the first things for me when I started to when this body decided to started to have the uh, the Kundalini was Feeling things inside me that I knew shouldn't be moving around the way they're moving. A lot of people can feel like they're getting possessed, and the whole idea of possession, you know, is not a, it's not a comfortable uh, idea for most people. Uh, possession is a far more common experience than most people uh, understand. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is fairly calm, but it isn't disastrous. It's not the disaster that you think it would be. And certainly you don't want to believe Hollywood. Oh, my gosh. Do not believe Hollywood movies. They are not telling you the truth. They are selling tickets to their movie, and they will sell whatever ticket that they feel harvest enough energy and strength and fear and endorphins from you uh, that they can get. And this is, you know, it's, a, it's purely a commercial venture. And so really be advised when you go see a movie that you're watching a movie. This is this came out of somebody's fantasy land, you know, unless it's uh, a, a history pick or something like that. But uh, don't believe what Hollywood says about evil or the nature of evil or the powers of evil. I don't you notice that I don't even have to see the movie and I know that that Hollywood is framing evil as this incredibly difficult power to overcome and it's not. It is not a difficult power to overcome. It is an easy power to overcome. The difficult power to overcome is from our own ego. You know, we we kind of get attached to having a fear of 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 uh of uh want or uh, or you know having as much as you need to be happy and if you don't have that well then you're in fear okay uh want and gain okay fear of loss and want of gain so I want you to really understand that this works on an emotional level too. Don't buy into what programs that are coming to you in your society. You know, in the West, we're looking at Hollywood, we're looking at books, books, we're looking at churches, we're looking at internet, we're looking at just small talk between you and your friends. Oh, I heard this, or oh, I read that, or you know, and and, and all of a sudden it begins to take on uh, machinations of, of of truth when in fact it may be as far from the truth as you possibly get. With regards to possession and the kundalini, it's not as common as you might think, and yet possession amongst the population is not as uncommon as you might think. So uh, the possessing force of the kundalini on the human body is the kundalini. 
you'll feel like you're, well, for me, I felt like my spine turned into a snake. Seriously, you know, it was whipping all over the place there, you know, and I'm, I'm driving my Volkswagen down 8, down the uh, freeway, was that, uh, um, I think it was down uh, Freeway 80 in, in Northern California towards San Francisco. And I'm taking my girlfriend to to her college class, and and uh, my spine is twisting like a snake, and, and I'm driving the car at the same time, of course, naturally. And uh, she looks over and she goes, she goes, what are you doing? <laughs> and I oh, just uh, just driving the car, uh, maybe a little yoga posturing here. Which was a total lie because I didn't know uh, that you know I, didn't, I had never heard of a yoga posture that turned your spine into a serpent. But there we are. There, you know, this type of thing can happen to you, and you know, it begins to really brush up against what you what you consider to be your safe reality, which is your ego understood reality. That's your safe reality. Um, with uh, with that type of experience, it can really, it can really throw you uh, on a mind bender. And just don't go into fear. Once again, you know you're having Kundalini. Uh, if you don't know you're having Kundalini, you can go to Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one dot com, all one word. I know it's pretty long. You go there and uh, go to the left uh, side of the of the opening web page and. Uh, just follow the prompts about what you want to find out. In this case, I want you to do the the comparison for phenomena. So you go there, you, you open up the page, and you can start marking what phenomena you're having. And and, and be truthful with this. Be truthful. I know everybody wants to have Kundalini now because, because they see it as the ultimate power, and everybody wants to be the ultimate powerful person in the universe. And so they all are going to have Kundalini whether they have it or not. Now, of course, this has been going on for a while. You have a lot of teachers out there that don't have any idea about Kundalini, let alone have it themselves, and they're out there teaching Kundalini. And yet, you know, this is this is what is occurring. And so, so we put this information out here to kind of balance that a little bit. Uh, for those of you that might have a question about the, uh, the Kundalini uh, call, area code 347 Nine three four zero zero two six. I would like to thank Brandon Fashji, Kundalini Fire, Tim Ashworth, Eileen Loro, Teresa Joe, as well as Marilyn Drakina, Eileen, and of course Santara and Rosemary and John for listening to this to this live broadcast. So call in to Amelia Santara if you have any questions, and she'll relay those questions to me. So let's continue along the lines of the power that our emotional bodies have over our awakening. It literally can make it a, a beautiful thing or a terrible thing. For those of you that have information, uh, those of you who have been guided to, to receive this information, uh, really, really, really take it to heart. This is the truth. There is no money that's... that's uh, corrupting this information. There is no power or position. There is nothing to be had or to be grasped by the ego. So you take this information in its purity and you begin to apply it to your situation. And you may be thinking, well, Chris, you haven't really told me anything to do yet. Because you're equating uh, doing something with physical activity. In this case, I'm talking about emotional activity. And in our culture, we are not taught to control our emotions very well. We're not even taught to really uh, go there at all, except when we have an emotion that we want to ex you know, express. Uh, sadness, happiness, joy, anger, uh, futility, rage, whatever. Um, so... Now that you have this information, you have the ability to make a different choice, a choice that takes you away from depression, a choice that takes you away from focusing on phenomena that is 
that is emotionally uh, expressive. Now, some of the things that you're going to see as emotions need to occur, the crying, for instance. Uh, when you have the Kundalini in its early phases, and even actually, you know, after you've had it a year or two, you're going to be wanting to cry a bit, maybe even a little bit more than a bit. You're going to want to cry a lot. And it's not just for sad things. You're going to start crying for joyful things, for happy things, for love things. And so I want you to understand that your tears, and I've mentioned this, pretty sure I've mentioned this in other uh, blog talk uh, radio uh, broadcasts, uh, uh, you have the ability to change a an emotion. You have the ability to change it from, say, fear into understanding, and then from understanding into acceptance, and then from acceptance into love. You have that ability right now to do that. And all you need, really, is just a little information, a little permission to take it, you know, as far as it's willing to go within you. Uh, But that's easier said than done. It's easier said than done. And so uh, you need to understand that patience and the integrity of your personal search uh, is worth taking some time to do. Don't try to do it all in one day. It's not something you can do, you know, with your astrologer sitting over a phone conversation, having a cup of tea. I mean, you can start the process there. Neither do you have to be, you know, at war, sitting on an elephant's back, dodging spears. You know, neither do you have to be in that situation. <laughs> okay. But you can be in the typical situation that we'll find uh, a, a Western person going through their life, uh, driving to work, being at work, uh, getting along with people at work, that, that type of a thing. So... Uh, yeah, you can initiate these emotional controls within the Western context, the the, the living life in the Western way. Um, yeah, so take that knowledge and, and utilize that knowledge, especially for those of you who have the Kundalini right now and are feeling a bit overwhelmed. That is normal. You should be overwhelmed. Um, we don't have schools so much these days that prepare a person to have the kundalini. It wouldn't be hard to put together. I mean, there are very specific protocols for people to learn how to how to accept their kundalini and 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 you know respect it and love it and want it and have it. I mean, even today we have millions and millions and millions of people that are striving to awaken their kundalini right now. They want to awaken it mostly from ego concerns. You know, they want great power, they want great knowledge, great information, or they want to have a, they want to be a great influence on on other people. You know, Uh, you have it already. You have it now. Except you weren't maybe looking for it so hard. Maybe you weren't looking for it at all. Maybe you were doing astrology or channeling or tarot cards or, you know, uh, goldfish, psychic goldfish communication. All these different uh, horrifications of uh, information. Now, now the Kundalini, however it's come to you, has come to you. And all of those old expressions of spiritual practice need to fall away. All the Reiki you were doing needs to fall away. It got you to this point, but it's no longer useful to you. It's kind of like uh, for years and years and years you wanted this special car. I hope this is going to be a good analogy. (laughs) So there's a sports car that you all want to buy, and oh my gosh, it's a beautiful car, and you just need those keys. You just you need that car, so you win the car. You actually win the car, but you don't have the keys. Now you got to get the keys, okay? And the keys in the Kundalini context 
our information. It doesn't make the Kundalini car go. That's going to go anyway. Okay. What it allows to happen is for your mental mind and your emotional mind to come into a balance and a flow with what is happening for the person. Okay. This balance and flow is a huge deal and and this can this can allow you to to be successful with this or to have a much much more difficult journey. Now sometimes like me a person needs to have a difficult journey. It's necessary. Uh it's necessary to to get a blockage uh resolved or balanced. It's necessary uh, from a karmic level, it's necessary for you know a lot of different uh, uh, reasons. Uh, it may be necessary for you to have a difficult experience, and I want you to go into it. Go into it. Go into it with integrity, with love, with understanding that you have to go through this, and and partake of that difficulty, and let that education seep in. And let the Kundalini help you digest the information that it's giving you through the uh, the creation of this uh, this difficult time period for you. Go into it. Don't be afraid. Don't think that it's always going to be easy, too. I get this a lot. Oh, Chrisom, Chrisom, I I feel a pressure behind my left earlobe, and it's. Pulsing on and on. It just kind of goes like, did it, did it, did it. You know, and I'll say, well, it sounds an awful lot like your heartbeat. You know, don't, don't allow things to, to take you out of your calm strength. Don't allow physiological phenomena which Kundalini is ripe with. I mean, my gosh, it's it's almost, not completely, but it's almost a guarantee that when the Kundalini awakens, well, so does psychic uh, interaction also awaken. Um, speaking to a gentleman just the other night who, uh, you know, he'd been in psych wards three or four times, and, you know, he was calling me up to try to, to, to continue his, to continue his journey at trying to get an idea of what's happening to him. And, of course, it was Kundalini, and, of course, they didn't know. And so, of course, they turned him into a big pharmaceutical experimental facility, you know, a human experiment, experimental lab walking around on legs. And uh, none of it worked. None of it worked. And But but when he, when he was speaking to me on the phone, he says, you know, I'm not supposed to. You know, I probably shouldn't say this, but uh, you know, during during my experience, I I think I I developed the ability to have second sight, and he said it with such a degree of secretiveness and importance and power in his experience, and I immediately told him, I said, you know, that's all right, that's a natural thing to have happen with the Kundalini. You don't need to be afraid to state it to me. I wouldn't state it to a medical professional, as you have obviously experienced, uh, but you can state it to me in all of its clarity and and in all of its, its uh, dynamic. Tell me everything about what you've experienced. And, and you know, this happens to a lot of us where we're so terrified of, of, you know, ourselves of what we're experiencing. The last thing we want to do is say it to anybody, and then, and then when we do get up the courage to say it to somebody, well, the floor gets jerked out from under us because we're termed crazy and and bipolar with schizophrenic uh, positive schizophrenia, and you know, locked into a into a mental institution and given drugs. So I can understand his his position of being very cautious with it. But I'm going to suggest to you and to him, as I did to him, that you can say it, especially to other Kundalini people. Don't be afraid of your Kundalini family. Don't be afraid to say 
what you need to say. Sometimes you just need to say, hey, you know, I, uh, I've i got second sight. Or, hey, I spoke to an animal and it answered me back. Or, hey, you know, I saw this this golden ball of light drop down from the stars and land right in front of me. And, and uh, we had a nice conversation about Christmas trees. I mean, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> and there, there is. I'm not just pulling that, you know. There's a reason why I said Christmas tree, and we'll get into that later. Uh, there, There is a reason that you're having this, and so I want you to honor that reason. Don't make the kundalini do it all over again in a different scenario, just hoping that you'll get the point. Take the point now and and move forward in your enlightenment process. Move forward in your emotional stability I think Kundalini has really wanted this talk to be about the emotional stability. So pretty much I'll stay there. Now, if you have any questions about your emotional stability, um, it looks like we got two people on hold, it looks like. Uh, Santara, are those people holding for questions? Click, 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 click. All right. I'll start talking again and she'll interrupt me. Okay, so... If you do have a question, uh, the phone number is 347-934-0026. So with regards to emotional stability within the uh, the, the major um, phenomena of the Kundalini, the first thing that's going to happen is it will blow you away. Unless you've had some little hints of this throughout your childhood and, and as you're as you're Growing up, you know, you get a psychic experience here or a spiritual experience there so that there is a a little bit of a seed quantity of information within you that allows you to to have this experience. Great. But for those of you who haven't had that paranormal uh, following you, One of the first things that can happen is if you can uh, you can become terrified, emotionally terrified. Uh, seriously. Um, all of a sudden, you'll see yourself as one of those crazies on the corner, you know, preaching the gospel to nobody in general and everybody, you know, who has an ear. Uh, but you're not. You're not crazy. You're not turning into a to a, 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 a you know a, a street side preacher. You're having kundalini, and kundalini is a big, big step. And so, uh, with that big, big step, uh, are some big, big changes that are going to occur. And these are going to occur to your emotional body just as much as to your physical body. Just as much. Remember the you know the interconnectedness of it all. Uh, so, with regard to emotion, one of the first things you need to do is to do your best not to fear. Do your best not to fear. Um, some people will use me in that vector. Some people will use chrism as as a way to help them not go into fear. I mean. You know, I've I've survived all these things, and I've survived them well uh, to even be able to talk to you about these things. And so can you survive these things just as well, if not better. A lot of my difficulties I was put through in order for me to be able to teach you from levels of authenticity about what might occur for you. And, you know, there's enough. uh, Yes. yes. Hi, Susan. May I interrupt? Yes. Can you hear me? Hi. And there's a creaking noise that's quite rhythmic there, possibly a chair. <laughs> <laughs> so now I start, I'm visualizing <laughs> where you're doing the show from. I think. <laughs> people, people, couldn't hear me. people couldn't hear me at first, but now that, that my chair is talking, well, now they can hear everything. <laughs> and also, just to let you know that Marilyn is online um, on the phone there and has a question when you're ready. All right. Send her through. 
Okay. No waiting. No waiting for Kundalini information. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Chris. And how are you? Good, good. Thank you for calling. Thank you for talking about the emotions. I missed the first um, 45 minutes of your presentation, so I hope you didn't talk about this, or maybe I can hear it twice on the archives, too. But um, I saw your YouTube video on the on emotional control and the kundalini, and I thought that was great. Um, my emotions have been going crazy ever since my kundalini awakening 17 years ago. Um, and I think you rightly stated in that video that the best way to keep your emotions under control are to stay in the observer, to observe them. And uh, that really worked when I was able to stay in the observer. But do you have any hints for how to stay in the observer uh, awareness and watching your emotions, which then automatically seems to tone them down? Well, yeah, if if you're... you're if you can if you can get to the observer status at all, first of all, that's that's a pretty good step right there. Uh, not everybody can do that when they're faced with a fearful situation because the fear is 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 overriding you know any of what they feel their options are. But once you can get to the observer status, well then yeah then then you know. Uh, first of all, you know you're in Kundalini. Second of all, you know that you're observing your ego have an emotional outburst. And you can choose how much energy you want to put into that. As you watch your ego, you know, scream and cry and run and hide and do all those things, you can choose not to have a a positive, charged uh, uh, emotional body with that. You can make that choice. Um, I, I agree that it's almost impossible once you're in the already state of, of great fear, seeing a monster, you can't you can't get into the observer state. The fear goes too fast. But for situations like my father's dying now and I have a lot of anxiety, you know, about it, so I, I try to get myself in the observer to begin with before I go see him. Well, my father just died just, just last month. Um, but I don't what, have fear about his dying because I know he'll be happy. I have fear about him leaving, my sister then leaving, and and me being alone. He 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 will be fine. I have no I have no qualms about that. But my but, sister then's going to leave town, and I'm going to be alone. And he's kind of the end of the family in 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 Tucson here. But so so just being with him kind of brings out a lot of anxiety in me and. Uh, I try to, if I get into the observer state when I go, I, I do much better, but I, it's hard to stay there. It's hard to stay in the observer state without forgetting that you're trying to observe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, it's right. You know you have to right? Pardon me? You know you have to right? You're, you're just a squeaky chair is coming through now. Can you hear me? Not well. Can you speak up? <laughs> I've got this microphone adjusting. That's great. How about, how about now? That's great. Okay, so uh, your question is how to not fall into a uh, a uh, emotional terror. How how to decide ahead of time, all right, I'm going to try to stay in the observer state because this is going to be an emotional situation. I'm going to try to stay, I'm going to try to observe my emotions. And how do you stay there? Because you can do that for five minutes and then it just seems to disappear. You, you well, lose you have, the observer state. At least I do. After about five minutes, I it's like, and then I'll remember again, oh, I was supposed to be observing myself and my emotions, and I'll get back there, but it's hard to stay there. Well, uh, yeah, I, I understand it's hard to stay there, but the more you stay there the and the longer you stay there, the greater uh, um, uh, understanding you have about how to stay there. Now, because I am not you and I don't have your karma and I don't have your, you know, the, the emotions that you need to go through, what I'm going to tell you is it's something that can be used by everyone, but I'm going to suggest that you use it personally. Okay? I need you to just forgive yourself for having the fear. I need you to forgive your father. I need you to forgive your sister. 
If they go or if they stay, it doesn't matter to you anymore. Family is only as far as a thought away. Okay? You don't need to be sleeping in the same shoe in order to have an appreciation of presence of family. Who does not have uh, geographical boundaries associated with it. And yes, it is nicer to be in the in in the uh, presence of people that you love. I get that, but it is not something that should be able to control your level of happiness. You don't need to be surrounded by family. This in a Kundalini context, the entire world is your family. You're never away from family. And yes, I know we have a special relationship with our fathers and our sisters and our mothers and our brothers and you know all of the all of the human uh uh people that are around us but you are never alone you are never abandoned not by your kundalini not by all the other creatures around you giving you examples on how best to live your life you you're different than most people now marilyn you have kundalini and so from that perspective, you can take control and relinquish control at the same time. Forgive yourself for having fear or trepidation. It's okay to be sad that your father's dying. I was I was quite sad that my father, you know, had had a difficult uh, passing. Um, I was quite happy when he was released from his body because his pain was so much, and he wouldn't let me help him, of all people. So I had to just sit there and suffer with him, which I did happily, and uh, and then and then help him on his way. Uh, there is that sense of loneliness when you lose a parent, or you lose a, a spouse, or you lose a, a BF or a GF or a kid or a child. Or, you know, there is that sense of loss that can occur. And I'm just going to counsel you to recognize, okay, there's that loss. That person is no longer physically in my life, but I still love them. I still, you know, give my, my love and my happiness to them wherever they are. And let that be. Let that be the the modus operandi for you when it comes to dealing with these types of issues. You're going to have to tear the issue apart. You're going to have to forgive and, and work with each filament of that issue. Most of it is forgiveness, forgiveness to self and forgiveness for other potential situations. And then, and you might think, well, gosh, I, I, for, I forgave everybody yesterday. Gosh, what, I have to do it again? Yes. Yes, you'll have to do it again. You'll have to turn it into somewhat of a practice. The bodies aren't changed immediately when it comes from a position of higher mental functioning or ego. It takes time. It takes repetition. It takes a a continuous mindset and focus for a person to do what I'm suggesting that they're doing right now, uh, you have to do it over and over and over again. You have to forgive over and over and over and over and over. You have to be happy on purpose uh, over and over and over. You just have to accept that as the new you, the new way that you are bringing uh, the kundalini into physical and emotional expression on this plane. I, you know, I don't talk too much about plasma trails and in the in the energetic. Uh, uh, wake that we that we leave uh, with regards to the Kundalini, but it's quite immense. It's quite strong, and people crossing crossing that 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 wake can have their emotions adjusted. And so, I always like to tell Kundalini people to to stay as loving and as happy and as grateful and forgiving as you can when you are loving. And when, when you're just forgiving, if, just forget about the other ones. If you live in a, in, in a state of forgiveness, nothing can harm you. Nobody can harm you. And 
for those of you who can feel the answer to that question, I invite you to feel that answer. Feel it. That that is coming out as an as an unspoken directive. So here you go. Broad spectrum telepathy. Broad spectrum. I've just given it to you. See what comes up into your minds. I know, I just surprised you with it. I apologize. But these are this is the way the Kundalini works through me sometimes, is it wants to give you a direct a direct experience. And so on a broad based telepathic plane, right now, those of you who are able to reach, reach into this and ask your Kundalini for the meanings of what it is that I've just put out there for you. Broad spectrum. Broad spectrum, okay. And so, uh, Marilyn, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Does that does that help you at all? Yes, that that would help. But I also would like a little bit more on staying in the observer, the witness state of mind. Or is that just a matter of sure. practice and mind control and self awareness and? It's discipline. It's all a matter of your own discipline. Yeah, you you practice it daily. You you recognize how it feels so that your physical body can tie in with the with the sensations and your mental mind, your mental body can tie in with the physical sensations and your emotional body can also tie in with the physical sensations. You don't really care if your ego body ties in or not. Okay? Your spiritual body already is tied into those areas already. Okay? So you're taking those three plus your spiritual body and you're recognizing the discipline that is needed in order to stay in the observer state. Now, I don't want you to stay there 24-7. Just as long as you need to, that's all. With Kundalini, you're automatically put into the observer state. It's just that most of the observing is going on by the ego because... You know, the ego sees its world falling apart around it. And and so, you know, it's hard to take the eyes off of that. But with you, Marilyn... I, uh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry Chris. I'm, I was going... If I could say something that came up for me there. Um, sure. You know, you were, you were saying about um, how important it is to take control... And, you know, in the context, say, of what Marilyn is saying there about anxiety or fear. And for me, taking control was actually surrendering, you know, because that was how I took control. I was able, when I, I had a few mantras that I used to say when I was, as an observer, when anxiety increases, there's, you know, that option to to go with it and to move away from being the observer or not and for me I took control by saying you know I surrender to truth I surrender to God I surrender to love I, I surrender to Kundalini but truth love God and those things allowed me by saying that that allowed me to stay in what you're saying about observer, Marilyn, but also to not go to that place of fear and anxiety. So I just thought I'd, I'd say that. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, by, by surrendering, uh, surrendering is really putting the power in into your pocket, so to speak. Uh when you surrender your control to the kundalini, the control of your life, the control of your kundalini experience, you open yourself to receive everything. And yet, if your surrender is deep enough, uh, it all it all comes into place automatically. Surrender is one of those uh, one of those. Uh, magical cards, I guess, if we're going to use analogies with card games. Uh, it's, it's your ace in the hole. It's your, it's, your, it's your ticket into 
initiating discipline upon yourself or or initiating uh, protocols that will allow a person to come in to their observer status. You have to practice it. You even have to practice surrendering. You have to practice surrendering, forgiving. You have to practice living in gratitude. You have to practice these things. They're not just something that, oh, yeah, I heard about gratitude. It's, I, I'm grateful. Yeah, I'm grateful right now. I'm grateful. And then, you know, for the rest of the week until you're reminded of being grateful again, then you're not. What I'm going to suggest you do is that you you make your kundalini such an important part of your life that when you do something to communicate with it or to to in some way uh, adjust its experience with you, that you do so with extreme, um, profound respect. So you're not just, you know, you're not flying off the handle with the kundalini. When you speak with the kundalini or you pray with the kundalini or you ask the kundalini for a certain type of thing, that you realize that you are talking to a divine living source that is real and separate from you. Well, that was interesting. That was not me, folks. That was somebody somebody else. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the scenario is, is, yeah, you take control. You practice the mindfulness. You practice being the observer. You actually go into a certain place. Uh, go into a busy restaurant and decide that you're only going to focus on a certain sound or a certain word or a certain color or a certain person or a certain whatever and just focus on that amidst all the other sounds. And you can kind of get an idea of the level of focus that you might need to uh, initiate observer status upon yourself. And, and and as you do this, you'll you'll recognize, you'll go, oh, geez, I do need to practice this. I need to get myself conditioned. And I think, Marilyn, uh, you put it quite clearly, uh, Marilyn, uh, you know, this is something that, that you do from practice, that you do from from realizing that, that you need to go there in order to get there. I know that sounds silly. You need to go there in order to get there. What that means is you need to show the initiative. You need to show the initiative to practice going into the observer state. And by doing that, by showing that initiative of going into the observer state, it becomes much, much, much easier for you to do it and to hold it. So, Marilyn, you make that choice, okay? Thank you. You're welcome, my dear. You're welcome. And and thank you. Thank you for calling in. Okay. Uh, now, I, I also want to put out those numbers for people. Uh, the number is 347-934-0026. Uh, if you have any kind of a question about your Kundalini Awakening uh, experience, give me a call. Looks like Rosemary has a question. Come on down, Rosemary. She's coming. She's walking down the aisle. She's coming up to the stage. And she's yep. on stage. Um, yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Okay, thank you. I can't see that on my phone. That original question was uh, about uh, whenever you asked about the sound, if it was hearing, if it was better. And I just was reporting in. That's oh. all my question. Okay, <laughs> but I I really do want to thank you for what you've described. It, it it's not my experience yet, and you know that. So it's very helpful, and especially Marilyn's question here towards the end. And sometimes, you know, I have spent I think a lot of my life being an observer and being a way of avoiding emotional experience. And well, maybe I realize so, maybe that. so, yeah. I mean, like I say, so, I mean we're you know, we're we're very we're very uh divergent in our interests in our in our work. So for instance, uh mm-hmm. uh Santara, she's been a counselor 
And so the working as a counselor, you're you're always that observer for another person. Mm-hmm. You play that part. And so you mm-hmm. are that observer for another person now. But it's a different story when it's with yourself, when you're yeah. the one that wants to observe you. Now, for me, you know, earlier on in my process, my kundalini told me that I had to I had to do a lot of self-correcting. And so, uh, because of the power of this force within me, I really had no choice. You know, it wasn't like I wanted to get up that day and and do all this self-correcting, right? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wanted to go out and do do as I had normally been doing. But no, Kundalini came to me and said, you need to self-correct. Every time you do something, that takes you out of communication with your kundalini or with yourself or is in a way resistant to what the kundalini is telling you or to how you know intuitively that you need to react to certain people. Mm-hmm. As soon as you start, if you go off path with that, if you go off of uh, off of script with that, and, and it's a wide script, it's not a, you know, it's not a typical type of script. Um, When you go off the path or off the wagon with that, then you need to self-correct. And you need to self-correct right then and there, right as soon as it happens. So with Marilyn, Marilyn is talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, coming into the, to the, uh, to that witness state you know, and I'm saying, well, okay, you know, and, and and I think she knew this intuitively herself and said, you have to practice it. You have to go there. You have to do it. You can't expect it to be done for you. And so as you practice this and as you do it and as, in my case, you know, as I, as I continuously self-corrected uh, myself, I got better and better and better about living my life in a way that was conducive to kundalini. And you know, you know, Rosemary, that that kundalini has extremely high ethical values. And whether or not the people understand that doesn't really matter. What matters (laughs) is that they respond in a highly ethical way. A lot of people are just born ethically, you know, compact. They're there. They've got their ethics. You know, however they were raised, however, what karma they came in with, whatever, their ethics package came in complete. Okay? And, and I mean, it came in fully. I don't want to say incomplete because it sounds incomplete. And it's not incomplete. It's mm-hmm. complete. <laughs> so, with that in mind, it, you, you must constantly... You know, Chris, and when you were saying self-correct, my correction has been often turning the car around. Well, yeah, and yeah. Tell them, tell, them about going, the, uh, tell them about the restaurant experience. The very first time? Yes. The Applebee's? Yes. Yeah. Well, it was, I, I came from a, a lovely evening of uh, a, like a prayer service for peace and and um, just an amazing evening and it was 11 o'clock and I was driving home, and this place is about 25 minutes at least from home at that hour, driving along, and that's I just the guidance I got was go to Applebee's, and I'm thinking, I don't want to go. I'm, I, don't, I just had food. I you know, went through that argument and got to the next light, and I turned around and nearby there, went into Applebee's, they have pretty. They have a lot shut down. I wasn't really hungry, so I just said to the gal, I, I, I would just like a cup of tea, and I really could use just the quieting for myself. That was helpful. But that's what I did, and then I thought, well, maybe I should order something, so I got <laughs> some fruit. And then uh, I was ready to pay, and I, I don't carry a lot of cash. I do my business with my Visa card. So she had everything shut down for to to work with my card, and I didn't have cash, and so she said, oh, forget it. She said, I'll pay for it. Mm-hmm. And I was deeply touched by that. I It still wasn't making a whole lot of sense to me, but I said, well, I guess. So when I 
told Kristen about it, it was he and he said immediately, that was for her. That event was for her, and I did the next day call and share that with someone, well, how kind that was of her. So I'm learning that. I've had stuff that's more than just a red light. It would be two or three or four or five miles to turn around. And that one time I did that was... Um, a place that I walked, I could, I don't need to, I'm not going to, I don't want to go in there, you know. So I did, and I walked, and, and when I walked into the store, there was something exactly that I needed that someone told me they don't carry. You'll never, you know, you won't find it there. Plus talking to someone, and I needed muscle as well to move something in my house. And by the time I got home from turning the car around, it was like 50 minutes I had what I needed. I had somebody say to me, my neighbor say, oh, so-and-so, uh, he'll help you. And it was all done. And that one was good. for me. Well, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. So so one thing I like about you and your process, uh, Rosemary, is that you are willing to do the self-correction. You are willing to do the work. And I want to I wanna hold you up as, a, as an excellent example of a person who is walking this talk. Uh, you may not have all the phenomena that you would like to have. <laughs> but that's a double-edged sword. Uh, but you are doing the work. You are doing the hard work uh, that you need to do. You can ignore that phone. I'm not going to answer it. And uh, so I want to compliment you, Rosemary, for the work that you're doing. And I look forward to seeing you out here at the ashram. Okay. Yes. And uh, just so you know, the Yosemite is still closed, and so I'm looking at either Shasta Lake Tahoe or or uh, uh, going in t- going east of Los Angeles into the desert. So just you can roll those around your mind for a little bit, and I want to open it up to people uh, that are listening. That yes, if you want to come visit me here at the ashram, uh, we're in Santa Rosa, California, Northern California, and. Uh, we have a very limited space, but we we bring people in uh, every now and again. Amelia was just here, and and uh, Rosemary's going to be here, and then we have other people that want to come and visit. And I want to extend that invitation uh, to to our extended uh, Kundalini Awakening family. Okay. Well, thank you, Rosemary. Thank you. For, well, Kristen, for, I realize yeah. next week. I, I thought of this before. I'm going to be there, and I'll be sitting in the room where you're talking live. Uh, maybe we might we might be in the car too. <laughs> oh well, well, wherever you are, you'll be doing so the, it, and I'll. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, next week, uh, uh, this is the. Um, gotta check my computer. I think this is the ninth. Yes. Yes. Today is the ninth. So a week from today, uh, I was just going to cancel the show. Uh, Amelia's not going to be around. I'm I'm going to be traveling. But I'm not going to cancel the show. I'm going to do the show. I'm going to bring this little iPad thing and this iMic or iRig, and I'm just going to try to do the show from this little station in the car, wherever we are, hopefully at a Wi-Fi station. So the show is coming on next Wednesday uh, from somewhere. We won't know, but it will be Rosemary and I uh, in the car. I will, uh, I will do my very best to bring this through. But as many of you know who have been following us here on Blog Talk, we, uh, we get technical difficulties here uh, just by virtue of this, this show today. Uh, my microphone or, or something was not working uh, that took out, I guess, the first half hour of this show for those who weren't listening on the phone. And uh, and so I'm gonna, matter of fact, Rosemary, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and and move us over to uh, Amelia Centaro. Okay, my dear. Yes. Thank you for listening, Rosemary. Thank you. Thank you. A great help. And that goes that goes for everybody. The more questions you can answer, the more people can be helped. Um, 
So feel free to call in and answer the number is or and ask questions. The number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Uh Santara. Yes, Chrism. Um Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Uh so do, I would like you to repeat everything that you said at the beginning of the show uh, so that people can, you know, because the, the mic or whatever the issue was went out. So if you would please uh, repeat that, and uh, and I'll move on to the next thing. Also, uh, yeah, will, yeah, just repeat it. I'm just, I'm just, um, I'm not, sh- I think you're going to be on a plane next Wednesday, Bush. No, I'm not going to be on a plane. No, you're not. Okay. No. Okay, so I shall. I shall. No, I, I know when I'm in the air, and uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I'm in the air, let's see. A, a, a rosemary's coming on the twelfth, and well, yeah, I might be on a plane. Let's see, let's we'll see. If I'm on a plane, folks, it's not going to happen. Okay. If I'm on an airplane, you know they won't let me broadcast. If if if. If I'm in the airport, I just might do it, okay? Yeah, yeah. In the airport. Good. But anyway, I will try it, and I will be in contact with Santara and Eileen and other people, and they can keep everybody apprised. Okay, so will I say a little about the Kundalini Awakening Seminar again then? Yes, please say that and, and any of the other announcements that you like uh, to give. Yes, yeah, I will. Thanks. Okay, so let me tell you again about the Kundalini Awakening Seminar. It's happening in Dublin. It's in Ireland. And I would particularly like to draw those people who are listening who live in Europe, I'd like you to maybe pay a bit of attention to this because it's very easy to get to Ireland. And there are lots of flights in from all all the cities around Europe um, with Ryanair. Ryanair is a particularly good value um, carrier. So... You could check that out at www.ryanair.com. So I'd like to tell you the dates are the 18th of October, the 19th of October, and the 20th. And we begin at 7 p.m. on Friday, the 18th of October. And we're with each other through Saturday and Sunday, and we finish at 4 p.m. Those of you who will be flying in from Europe and we have people coming from different countries. I will be collecting people from the airport and bringing them to the venue. And if anybody is listening now and hasn't heard of this before um, and you have questions, uh, please do write to me and we can communicate by email or by phone. So I will give you the email address now. It's Kundalini Matters at gmail.com, small um, letters and no spaces. And my phone number is 00353-860297676. And the venue that the seminar will be taking place in is in the Boyne Valley. And I was telling people earlier that um, this is a very ancient place with lots of very ancient um, monuments, Newgrange being one of them. There's another one called Doof and Nof, but we're in the middle of all that. And these places are very, very ancient, older than the pyramids. And again, on the 18th of October, we will be gathering, and that night is um, an eclipse of the moon. So I, I really just like the fact that the seminar is starting at that time with the eclipse of the moon. So please do write to me at kundalini matters gmail dot com if you have any interest or if you have any questions or um, inquiries at all. And I'd like to also just let listeners know that. Um, well, you already know Chrism is a unique teacher, um, but in the context that he does not charge people. Um, You know, he gives information and support and teachings for free. And he does this on his website. He does this on Facebook, on the various groups in Facebook. And he does this on YouTube as well, where there are over 200 
um, YouTube videos for people to listen to and watch. And he does that also. He gives his teachings here on Blog Talk. And nobody is excluded because of money. Everybody has equal access to his teachings and to the information that he gives about Kundalini. And Prism does this, like it's a 24-7 full-time service of love that Chrism gives. But, you know, I need to say as well that Chrism needs to pay bills, buy food, and all of those things. You know, he does need money just like all of us. And so while he does not charge, he certainly will accept donations um, from those who are able and those who wish to donate to contribute in support of the work and its sacred work that Chrism does. So I would like to give you the address that you can go to if you wish to do this. And again, as I say every week, there is absolutely no pressure on anybody to donate. It is only if you are in a position to do so and if you wish to do so. So you can go to www.ascension-kundalini.org blogspot.com and there you will see a donate button on the right hand side and it's it's easy peasy after that so I'll give it to you again it's www.ascension hyphen kundalini dot blogspot.com so that's it and again I'll just give you once more my own email address if you have any inquiries about the seminar it's kundalini matters at gmail.com Okay, that I'm finished, Chrism. Thank you. Okay, all right. All right. Um, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Okay, good. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, all right. So this is, that's pretty much how it is. Now, i got about 18 minutes left. Uh, does anybody want to call in? If so, the number is 347-934-0026. If you have any question about your uh, Kundalini Awakening experience, uh, feel free to call in. Continuing along with the uh, with the emotional uh, balances, let's let's talk some more about that. Uh, in our in our country or in the Western world, we're not really taught how to control our emotions. Now, uh, sure, as kids, we're we're taught that we're not supposed to cry at certain times of the day. We're not supposed to laugh within certain scenarios. But that is more for another person. That is that is more so that you don't embarrass another person or you don't you know you don't embarrass your parents or you know you don't uh embarrass yourself. Uh with Kundalini it's it's much different. Uh you you must initiate controls and discipline over the ego as it connects itself to the emotional body. So those ego slash emotional connections need to be uh, restructured so that your ego doesn't pull from the emotional body so much and captivate it to such a degree that a person can be put into a a position of of uh of pain for a long 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 time okay don't want to do that do not want to do that and so uh really take the time to look at your emotions look look at why you're having them are, are is it rage is it is it uh new love new love as you know i've just found this man or this girl and they're so beautiful and they've got such high qualities and this and that and this and that you know and everything is good or is it is it a more is 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 it an older love a love that has stood the the tests of time you know a love that has allowed you to grow with another person and to to you know to go you know into into love that way so I really want you to not allow the ego to hijack your emotional body. Make it a point. Make it a a um, something that you can self-correct. The minute you start seeing yourself get wrapped up in rage or or wrapped up in self-pity or wrapped up in 
in uh, in the hurt over your baseball game or your baseball team lost or your your football team, you know, whatever. Um, I want you not to be hijacked by those emotions. Doesn't mean, you know, you can't feel them. You, you know, you can't feel the the uh, the enjoyment of, say, a sporting event or something like that. But it's just so that you don't become controlled by this. And I know that normally without Kundalini, it's very easy not to become controlled by this. But with Kundalini amplification and with the ego reaching out into the emotional body to to take as much of that as it can in order to express its fear or its sadness or its anger or its bitterness or you know what you know whatever it is uh its attachment then then uh you need to look at that and you need to choose to take a very specific control and that control is is based in self discipline that control is based in practicing becoming the observer and i don't want you to see becoming the observer the observer as a as a as a way out or as a as a way where you can avoid all responsibility because i'm the observer now no you don't ab- avoid your responsibilities matter of fact you're maintaining your responsibility you're maintaining your connection to the holy kundalini within you you're, you you can be confident that as you do this, you begin to strengthen your ability to stay in that observer status, to stay uh, in that that uh, that position of uh, of detached detached authority. This is what it is. It's detached authority. So it's authority. Uh, that isn't dependent upon you being attached to that emotion or that situation or this situation or that emotion. Okay, you are non-attached. And by that non-attachment, are you given authority over the situation that is being demonstrated in front of you by you? Now, this all happens very fast. You know, if somebody cuts you off on the freeway, how long does it take you to lift that middle finger? Or to, or to want to to lift that middle finger. So, uh, go be, become that observer very quickly, and just as quickly, you can stop it if you need to, if you want to. Otherwise, just stay in that observation mode and see how you come up to to the uh, the ethical guidelines that the Kundalini is giving for you to do. It takes practice to be emotionally balanced. Practice under pressure, really. Kundalini gives you a lot of pressure. Head pressure, uh, abdominal pressure, chest pressure, pelvic pressures. I mean, you name it. The Kundalini will give you pressure. And I want you to just stay focused within that pressure. Be that observer within the pressure that you're feeling. So within that symptom of kundalini, be that observer. Be that observer. Let yourself be placed into an authority position within your kundalini awakening. Not to take the authority away from kundalini, but to add authority to the kundalini. To give yourself in to the promise of the kundalini by by not attaching not attaching to your to the petty emotional needs and and expressions that the ego will often try to put into the kundalini awakening experience this will happen at first but as you practice coming in to that observer space you give yourself the opportunity to practice having emotional control over that specific issue in your observer space. And as these issues accumulate, so does your strength and your power begin to accumulate. But you just need to remember to stay in neutral. You're not trying to manipulate here. You're trying to 
to stay unattached and yet observing. You know, look at any emotional charge that you may have as you come into this and look at that really quickly. Make your assessment and then self-correct and then jump right in with that self-correction. You understand? I'm hearing this big collective, yes, yes. (laughs) I'm hearing some, no, no. (laughs) But anyway, I would like to thank you all for for sticking with us uh, in this in this particular conversation, I apologize once again for the uh, for the many technical problems we have with with Blog Talk Radio. Um, I just it's it's still a good system to to get this information out there, and I'm going to keep doing it. But uh, sometimes we'll run into problems like we did today, and I apologize for those for those problems, and uh, hopefully. Hopefully, I mean, they're, they're corrected. What it is is I have an iRig microphone plugged into a PC only because the iRig microphone plugged into the iPad wasn't working. So we'll see. Uh, as as uh, Centaur mentioned, I, I do pinch pennies here. Um, be, I don't charge for this information simply because when I was in great need of guidance, and information, I couldn't find any. I couldn't find any. You know, that can be the that can be a choice between a suicide and continuing life. And and I remember that very very well. And so yeah, yeah, this goes out to you free of charge, as do all of these blog talk uh, radio programs. Uh, listen to them again and again and again because I guarantee you. There are there are energetic equations waiting for your second, third, fourth, and fifth time listening. There are energetic equations set up by the Kundalini for your specific thing, i.e., it's your Kundalini that's setting it up through the uh, through the offerings that my Kundalini gives. Okay, so thank you for for listening to this program. Uh, thank you, everyone who is listening on the archives. Uh, I would like to thank Amelia Centara and her husband, John. I would like to thank uh, Eileen Laurel. I would like to thank Barbara Berry and Glenn Ola and all the many people that have come together to help us bring this information into uh, into the, the masses of people. And you, listening to this program, help to make that occur. So thank you very much, everyone. For, for for listening, for participating, come to Ireland if you can do it. If you're in Europe, come to Ireland. It will be worth it. Uh, if if you can uh, arrange to to uh, meet in another way, then come out here to the ashram. Go visit, uh, 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 you know, Santara. I mean, start to reach into your Kundalini family and 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 make some connections there. We're all on the same page here, and so I just want you to know that, and I want to say thank you once again for listening to this program, and at this point, I am going to sign off. Good day, everyone.